All right, let's go. All right, all right, all right. Let's say cut some of the surprise in the National Hockey League. Boston is 5-1. I mean, I never dreamed they'd be 5-1. and one. No, everybody thought that they were going to struggle this year. This, and this, even Mar- and Marchant's not even playing. Yeah, yeah. I imagine when he gets playing. And um, pretty uh, good coach. Uh, uh, Montgomery must be yeah. doing something right. But, but I was watching that game the other day that they were uh, that they were playing. It was just penalty after penalty. It's yeah. just it's it was I was on. You know, you're rooting for the Bruins, but in overtime, there's not. You know what really bothers me? I'm really looking forward to seeing the three on three. Like I really enjoy watching yeah. three and three. And the referee calls the penalty. Now it's four on three. Four. Right. <laughs> Anyhow, Boston is four, at five and one. New York Rangers are three and one and one. We're pretty good. Uh, Dallas is four zero oh, and one. They're pretty good. Yep. St. Louis is three and all. Vegas, uh, I thought they'd get off to a brutal start. I don't know why. I thought they're four and two. Re- uh, Flames, uh, Calgary Flames, are four and one. Yep, they look good. Cadre is looking good with them. Is he ever? Uh, Kane, Hurricanes, um, Carolina is three and one and one. That's my dark horse for the Stanley Cup. <laughs> uh, Philly is four and one. Philly. Tortorella's really doing well. Yeah, they lead the league in fights right now. And well, they did last year too, didn't they? No, I don't. Uh, I think do? I think Minnesota. Oh, Smashville. Uh, yeah, no, I'm not sure, but it yeah, wasn't. I think wasn't Smashville Philly. did. Hurricane. Well, I'm glad to see he's doing well. Tortorella. Um, <laughs> Buffalo is four and one. Now there is a real surprise. Yeah. Well, they got they're getting some good goaltending. They got a lot of young guys, and I and I, I that, always root for Buffalo because that owner. Spends the dough. Well, he's he, you know he does, and it always seems not to work out for him sometimes. But power's playing good. He looks like he on been on a power play forever. Yeah, it's just you know again it was funny that we watched him play for Mississauga Reps, and we knew he was going to be a good player. But we didn't think, but, he was but we didn't think he was going to be that good. I don't know what it is. It it seems as if he doesn't care or something. He cares. Don't get me wrong. But it, he doesn't worry about being yeah, a rookie. Yeah, he just has a very laid back style. Yeah, and that you know the bad thing with that with him though, I was l- listening to some um, uh, guys on the on the news and on the radio, and they're saying, "Oh, he's Chris Pronger." <laughs> yeah, he's like, you know, not, he's not, not Chris Pronger. <laughs> Chris Pronger was, was like, a mean guy. <laughs> he was a mean guy. I I remember I remember the time he took a guy into the boards, and you know, there's a little sanction. He just drove the guy's head right into it. Yeah. So on he, purpose. Yeah, he's not Chris Pronger. So. No. It's Brian Kilray's uh, birthday today, or yesterday. Right. And uh, I could tell a lot of stories about Brian. I'll tell one, okay? I'll just tell one. He broke his jaw. Jaw's broken. Goes to the doctor. It's all wired up. Now, Eddie Shore said... Well, oh, broke a jaw. I mean, you can play. You broke a jaw. Now that it's very, you have a broken jaw. I think that's the only thing he didn't have. Uh, sure, you, you, it's all wired shut. If you're sick to your stomach, you choke to death. So you have to carry. You're supposed to carry a pliers around, um, pliers around all the time, like wire cutters. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you can, you know, be sick. So he puts Pat Egan at one end of the ice. And he puts Brian Killer at the other, and they ran at each other day of the game. Yeah, in the morning skate, after morning skate. Run, and they're running at each other. He says, see, you can play. You can take that. If you can take that check, you can take any check. So the doctor comes to the game, must have, must have, must have been late, and he looks down on the bench, and there was Brian Killer. Get that guy off the, get him off the bench. You know, he could, he could have died right there. Anyhow, that was just one story. But the I, thing was, Brian Kilray, you said, was one of... I don't H, understand that one. Was, ...was one of his favorites. I don't know. I don't know. I, and you, were Brian, you and Brian were very much alike, so it's just surprising that, they, that he didn't like you, but he liked Brian. Yeah. What do you, what do you think about so that? So how many, how many wins did Brian have? Like, he's the most... 2,000 over 2,000. 2,000 wins in junior hockey. More sure. wins than any other... I remember when he started out... He didn't. He didn't even have one of the coats, the Rochester American coats. He, he had a restaurant, right? He still he gets, does. I he think. still does a restaurant. Great restaurant, I guess. 
And um, I give him one of my coats. That he greet people, you know, when he meet people, he'd have a Rochester Jack, American. Coat. One of your jackets. I was a, it was a brown one. It was a beauty. So is it true that if the team lost, and they're riding back, the sixty sevens lost, and they ride, they're riding back on the bus, and Brian was sitting on the bus, that he would put on Ann Murray. Yeah, that would pay them. For, <laughs> yeah, Ann Murray was his favorite. That he, was furry. So if they lost. He yeah, would play, okay. he'd smoke a cigar and put Ann Murray on. So the players, I mean, imagine then, you know, 20 years ago, they didn't have earbuds or oh what, my gosh. And they had to listen to Ann Murray. <laughs> and he, he'd, be, he'd have a few pops up the front. You know, a lot of people say to me, oh, your dad reminds me so much of my dad. You know, they say that all the time, right? And I, oh, yeah, okay. And then, but I'll tell you, no one reminds me of you like Brian Kilray. I mean, you and him are so much alike. Your jokes, the way you talk. It's just, it's phenomenal. I look at him and I see you talking. I remember the very first time I saw him. It was in the Empress Hotel. And he, I, I remember this like it was yesterday. He was sitting, it was at the end of the bar, and I was sitting just before the end of the bar, and he was sitting on the wall, and there was a couple, a couple guys between us. And he kept going on. He come from Dayton, I think, or some place, you know, one of those. But he kept going on and on how great, Shore was there, and I just sat there, just boy. <laughs> and here I, here, here he hated me. Uh, Shore hated me, and uh, I looked at him. I said, "You say one more good thing about Shore, I'm going to put you right through that wall." <laughs> <laughs> I, I, but he loved him. He, he, he and his uh, wife was a lot like mom. Eh, she looked yeah. like him. She acted like her. Nobody yeah. was like 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 your mother, like. Uh, like Bill Sweeney's wife was. Bill oh, Sweeney. is that right? To yeah. Angie, yeah. You know, I, I, I kid you, famous fleeting and everything. It is. Here's a guy that won the scoring championship in the American Hockey League three years in a row, 67 games, and he got over 100 points. And this I, was Bill Sweeney. Bill Sweeney never got a shot, not once. And why do you think that was? Like what? Well, he liked the barley corn pretty, pretty good. Oh, but that, yeah. Still, he still, still. Remember the time he brought me over at Canary? As yeah, a pet, I bought the thing. <laughs> Anyhow, Brian Kilray's birthday, and we want to wish him a uh, uh, happy birthday. I phoned him. Yeah, I sang that song. For he's a jolly good fellow, and you know, you know, um, Judy usually answered the phone, and here the guy he answered it. Oh. I, and then so when I was finished, I think, gee, what if this is <laughs> some I guy answered the phone <laughs> and the guy singing for he's a jolly good fellow. Anyhow, he is a jolly good fellow, and he's a great guy. So, Dad, you know, there's one big story coming out of Montreal. Yeah, and and Jack High, I I like that. Tell tell the story. We saw him play in for the Mississauga Senators, right in the GTHL when he was 15. And you want to hear something heartbreaking, Cindy? Yeah, it was him, and I think the backup goalie were the only guys not drafted. Oh, jeez! So he got passed over twice. In the OHL draft, and then somebody in Kitchener invited him to camp. So he would have been probably, he would have been 18, I think, then. So that's what they call a walk on? Walk on, yeah. Yeah. And and, and it's tough to make it a walk on. Yeah. Yeah. And so he made the team, and then uh, he eventually got traded to Hamilton. He's from Hamilton and went to the uh, Memorial Cup with the Bulldogs. And then he was passed over twice uh, in the NHL draft. Yeah. And Montreal Canadians Big invited them. him to they camp. They call him Wi-Fi now. Wi-Fi, because the way he spells his last name is X-H-E-J, X-H-E-K-A-J. Holy. And the guy says, you look like a Wi-Fi password. <laughs> <laughs> so I got to ask you a question, though, Dad. So he's big, can really fight. Oh, and big. Big, and, and he really gave night. it. He fought with uh, Zach Cassian, and you got to give it. He won. Well, and, uh, we'll say that. And um, got a goal last night, goal and an assist. So, and here he is in the backyard of the Toronto Maple Leafs, and the Toronto Maple Leafs need a big, tough defenseman. They'll <laughs> never take anybody from the unless there's a superstar. But like you look and you go, how did Montreal invite him to camp when he's playing in Hamilton? So he's playing what forty minutes down the road from Toronto. Toronto needs a big, tough defenseman. That's what they need, right? Yeah. They don't have that big stud defenseman to take care of Matthews or anybody. Yeah, they asked him that last night. And, and no, Montreal picks him up. But you said you never see Toronto Maple Leafs scouts anywhere. 
Like, do they? I never, never see any scouts there. Like, you know who's who and all that. And you never see, now you always see the hunters. You always see, you know, you know everyone in hockey. You never see a Toronto Maple Leaf no. scout anywhere. Never, never have. And They're over in Europe. What they, <laughs> yeah, boy. I, I guess there must be like a reason. The one thing I always thought that the Leafs would do, and I think it would be good PR, not that the Leafs need PR, is just to get a bird dog with a Toronto Maple Leaf. Just, just to, just to go and, and say, hey, we're watching your kids. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And, and be, as you say, they don't need any PR, but it would be nice to... You know, you know that give, they show a little bit of interest, and, and they don't. And here's this kid that, again, goal and assist last night, big tough, got into a fight, and, uh, and, and, and he, he, when the... Um, and he likes to fight. Yeah, yeah. And because... Uh, Cassian challenged him, not thinking he was going to fight. <laughs> Boy, he dropped the gloves. And, but when uh, the COVID lockout was on for the um, CHL, he worked at Costco. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'll toughen you up. You know, I know how he feels. Yeah. So, you know, the other thing, though, Dad, we were talking about watching um, Montreal, and they're off to a good start, is I think that Martin St. Louis, the coach, He's told that Cole Caulfield, shoot the puck. Yeah, just, just shoot it. Don't, don't worry about making plays. Just p- pound her on the net. Yeah, you can see when he's got the puck, he's got one thing on his Boom. mind. And he's scoring now. And, and he's doing good. And he's not too big. <laughs> Doesn't matter. See, you don't have to be big to be a, a good player. You, you have to be able to score goals. If you don't score goals, yeah, I'm sorry, they, do, they don't want you. But doesn't it help the defenseman to be big? Well, defenseman. I'm, I'm yeah, talking about players. Big, yeah. I'm here's there's a little guy that can really shoot the puck. That you have right. to do something. But I like I like it that because you 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 and I when we go out when we were watching the kids they pass the puck way too much. No, oh, and, and well, look at uh, McDavid. Uh, not McDavid. Um, Shane Wright when we first saw Shane Wright. He he his big thing in life was to, was to pass the puck. But you talked about that. I think that starts in minor, minor hockey when they're tight. They do. When the mothers and the coaches pass the puck, pass the puck, because they don't want their kid to be known as the ultimate puck hog. You know, Waller uh, Waller Gretzky, he used to say, shoot the puck and put the puck in the net. And and he did. The only time he passed the puck is when he couldn't shoot. And Waller Gretzky, and you know that if, if you read the book or knew him pretty good, that Gretzky used to cry after games because the, they used to call him Puck Hog. Exactly. Yeah. This is what happens, and uh, it sticks with them. Well, it didn't with Gretzky, and he, he turned out pretty good. Yeah, he's one of the few ones, though. You know, I mean, we always talked about that with Max Domi, right? He's got to shoot the puck more and all that. Well, that. you should have. I, I, one time I stood with uh, Max, or Ty. Now I'm not, now I'm calling Max. I used to call Max Ty. Now I'm calling Ty Max. <laughs> yeah. Anyhow, he, he shoot the puck, shoot the puck. He, he brought in, uh, a lot of people don't know, he, he brought in Sundin to make him shoot the puck. Yeah. Do you see what happened? Max uh, had a Got breakaway, a good... and behind him was uh, Patrick Kane. And Patrick Kane's, you know, doing the beaver tails, slapping the stick that he wants to puck. And Max shot and scored, got the winner. Yay. And they interviewed him. And the guy goes, well, he goes, Patrick Kane's behind you. He goes, yeah, he goes, uh, when you're going in with Patrick Kane and you shoot, you better score. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what he said? That's what he said. I, didn't, I, saw, I saw him being interviewed. Man, he did. Yeah, he did. He got a nice goal. Yeah. Dad and Cindy, we'd like to thank our sponsor, Spreads.ca. They're an online casino and sports book. And if you sign up now and use the promo grapes, they'll match your deposit up to $250. You get 10 spins on the big wheel for some big dough, and they'll spot you 25 bucks for your first uh, sports bet. And we'd like to always tell them that they're Canadian, which is a biggie. Yeah, well, it's a big biggie to me anyhow. And the Leafs right now are 4-2. and two. And here's here they're four and two, and they're talking about this guy getting fired. <laughs> and they're four and two. Holy smokes! Imagine if they were if they weren't doing good. They they are they are in the third period. There's no better team than any than the Leafs right in the third period. They just the, I don't know what they do. They go through the motions for the first two periods, and then they turn it on the third. If they they're losing, are a tough club on the third period. So, Dad, let me ask you a question. Wayne, you know, they got knocked around a little bit, and then in Dallas, Jamie Benn gave a real good cross-check right to the yeah. lower back of Matthews, and he's still hurting a little bit. 
So then they put in Clifford and Matthews. If you were those guys, is that a little? Yeah, I, 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 I never had that happen to me. Well, we better play Cherry tonight because you know, I never ever had. And I think that would be. But but they're so happy to be playing. I mean, they, one guy. You Can know. I tell a funny story about that? Yeah. So the Bruins were going into Detroit uh, in the mid seventies. I forget who it was and. Uh, they brought up a tough guy, big tough guy oh, from the yeah, American League. That. So he Hillingsworth, got into, I think his name was, and he and he got into a fight. Who was it? He got a fight. Okay, with. What, I'll tell a story. Yeah. I'll tell a story. We every time we go into a big, they'd always bring guys up from the American Hockey League that like were tough, tough guys. Tough, right? tough, I think the guy's name was Hillingsworth. I don't know why I think it's Hillingsworth. Anyhow, and we had a guy Clayton Bahal who looked exactly like like uh, Stan Jonathan. I mean, he, he he looked exactly like him. He, I was, was same incredible. height, wore Damn, a helmet. The whole deal, same helmet, uh, same. And I'll tell you a story about him after. So anyhow, he th- uh, Hellingsworth thought it was Stan Jonathan. That was good. They were facing off. And so they, they started a fight, and he just cleaned up on Clayton Ball. He was only a kid. And, uh, and so, <laughs> I didn't, you know, the kid did his best. So then, oh, about two, but the period, next period, it was in the same corner, the same thing as Stan. Stan, I think he kind of knew they looked like him. He kept rubbing them and, you know, in the face off and pushing them. And they, he just, he had a fight just clean. You can't believe it. It was just. So Stan really gave it to oh, him. Oh, just, and, 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 and things were. What the hell's going on here? He says, what I handled him so <laughs> easily before, and then the next, and he, he still he still think he still thought I was Clayton Ball. Let <laughs> I tell you about a story about Clayton Ball. He used to he used to take the guys in. Guys go in the corner first, and he just careened them. You know, really give yeah. it to him. And I said, you don't understand it. You got to go in the first. You got to go in first and get the puck. That, that's what we're paying you for. That's what they're paying you for, to get the puck, not to hit the guy. Well, I'm hitting the guy like, but doesn't it, you don't hit the guy. You got to go in and get the puck first. And I, I watch for that to see if a guy, and you can, you can fool a lot of people. You can't fool me. You take take that extra little stride one time and then let the guy go in first and then they can. Anyhow, Clayton Bahal, I, I, if you do listen or somebody will tell you about you or you're on, Don Cherry's great podcast. Yep. So, Dad, our buddy Boost Boudreaux's having a tough time. 0-5. I can't, you know, I, I watched them right up until the end last night. I thought, you know, and then right off the bat, Buffalo gets to two. Bing, bing. And good goals. They weren't there. They weren't, and then and then they, they got, got, got to play play. I'm hoping, get going, get going, get going. But I'm happy Buffalo's doing good. Yeah. You know, at some point you go, okay, Vancouver's changed their GM, they changed their coach, so maybe I, it's maybe it's the core players yeah. that they got to get rid of. I don't know. I think they'll get they'll get straightened out. Bruce will get. I hope he gets them straightened because they're not. He didn't look happy. They had a pretty good crowd last night. They didn't boo them. No, they threw. Well, somebody threw the sweater on the ice. I know that was some jerk. But Imagine they, throwing a sweater. How much they cost. No, it was, I just can't imagine it. I don't I, think it, I think it was a cheap one. I was don't a think replica? It, yeah, it was it a replica. No yeah. tie downs on that one. No. Right? <laughs> you know, one thing I don't understand is, you know what the pay players would really love, uh, or the fans would really love? You know how they throw all those sticks, those wooden sticks that they got? They, they're wooden sticks. And yeah. They, I, if they took their sticks, you know, that are they do not, they're not going to use anymore, and taped them up and, and everything like that, you know they're, they're broke. Well, not broken, but they they won't use them anymore. I think the people would go nuts. Yeah, something that's been used in a game as yeah. opposed to just a, a wooden souvenir. It wouldn't, wouldn't stick with no tape on it. Like, like who who cares? Yeah. But but when you like it, like say say Bobby Orr. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, and it, like his stick is a, a cracked or something. Well, He's if not, you're like with Austin Matthews, if you're a Leaf fan, oh, you, imagine, you'd, you'd want an Austin Matthews stick that he used in the game as yeah. opposed to. You know, just anyhow, I just thought I'd throw that in. So that has been a tough couple of months for the the police officers in Canada. What is going on? I I don't understand. The police officers, five of them killed in like six weeks. Well, there was uh, Devin Northrup, 
and Police Constable Morgan Russell were killed in uh, Innisville, Ontario. I mean, it's just unbelievable. Uh, they're going, they go call from a home to go to a disturbance. I mean, disturbance. You know, you know. Well, they. Always, I remember talking to Pat. We were talking to Pat Burns, the coach, right? And Pat Burns used to be a police officer. Right. He looks like one. And he said that was the one thing that they really were uh, worried, like they didn't like going because you had no idea what you're walking into. Well, is a disturbance the same as a domestic quarrel? Well, same, same, same thing. thing. Same, same thing. thing. Same yeah. thing. Remember, remember, he was talking about he had he uh, he went there and the, and the husband was just beating this woman up. So he grabbed the he grabbed the guy and held held the guy and the woman went and got a frozen turkey and hit him right over the head, head knocked, knocked him out. knocked him cold. Here you go. Yeah, well, he, that and he said you never know when you go in there what you're walking into. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Constable Northrup was uh, was 33 years old and had been on the force for six years. Constable Morgan Russell was 54 years old and he'd been 33 years on the force in Burnaby, B.C. Uh, Constable Sh- Sh- Shailen Yang, I mean, I she, she's going out to, to a, a homeless people, you know, and, and everything like that. She gets stabbed. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't. doesn't My question is, why was she by herself? Yeah. You know, and the guy that stabbed her had already was out on bail for two assaults. Was uh, had a bench warrant for him because he didn't show up for his for his his uh, court appearances. You know, and as you just we, uh, the money that the government wastes, yeah, and well, you don't have two officers going in there, and I, and and she was in the uh, homeless and mental health, to, you know, detachment trying to help them, and she wasn't moving them. She was just saying, "Hey, look, you know, it's sometime you got to move, you got you got to get out," and he, and he stopped her to death. Yeah, it 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 it, is, it really is unbelievable. If I had my way, and I never will have my way, I the two policemen should be together all the time. Absolutely, Ab- and and, and as you and, know what it is, Dad. It's just money, and yeah. they won't. You know, the government they want to defund the police. Yeah, I mean that's, 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 that, the thing. We, that's, that's another story. Like you, you and I, see, we're talking. Like, who would want to be a police officer? Oh, if I was a mother and I had a bo- a child, I want to say boy or a girl. Uh, no way to be a policeman. No? I mean, there's no way. You're, I don't get it. You're the bad guy. If something happens, what did you do? And and, and yeah, but there is a special. Oh God, I, love I, them. They, I, they have that they a sense of duty. Yeah, there's something about the police officer to me, or most of them that I've I've met. They have a, a sense of duty. That's right. I, I never thought of that sense of duty. I don't for uh, Tra- Travis uh, Gillespie. He was on the way to work and and hit and a, a car crash killed him. And uh, police constable Andre Hong was killed at Tim Hortons. You remember him, the big guy. And he would just, you know, just it is. It really is unbelievable that I can't. Re, I cannot remember uh, so many police officers being shot. But there is something about a police officer. They have a sense of duty. That you, Tim, that was uh, that was a great thing. I just, uh, I just. The only it, thing, like the one thing with police officers, is they have to deal with everything that the politicians and society doesn't want to deal with. The politicians really don't want to deal with the homeless crisis no. because they'll look bad, right? Yep. So the police have to deal with it. Yeah. The, the politicians in society, they don't want to deal with the drug issue. They really don't. But the police have to deal with it. They even and have to re- deal with wildlife. They have to deal with <laughs> I, wildlife. I, you know, with me, with the, with the animals. I mean, they, they, they have to deal with, as you say, a lot of stuff that they other don't, departments don't want to deal with. Right. The, Jack the, of the, all trades. The Toronto... You know, the Toronto City Hall, they don't want to deal with the gangs in Toronto. They just don't want to deal because they're afraid they're going to be called racist or they're going to be. But the police have to deal with it on a daily basis. So they got to deal with everything in society that the politicians don't want to deal with because they're afraid they'll not, they won't get elected. Police officers are the greatest people in the world.